All right, welcome back to another show where I'll doing fuse animations with the fuse tool. Today I want to look at doing some line animations and I'll be basing this on some of the stock work that a friend of mine does. And that's Sonia and she does, she's a motion designer. And she does these works templates. And we're gonna do this one here, the red angled lower third. And what I want to look at on this is mainly this outside animation with the lines. We can try and put all of it together. We'll see how much time we actually have. But let's look at the actual lines here. And I want to do these lines, the outside lines. The way we're going to start with this infuse is we're going to use the path feature. And the path allows partial line drawing. And I haven't done this in a while. So I'm going to figure that out first and I'm going to start over and I ignore this for a second and close this because we don't drive up the CPU because it tends to cause the fans to start going too much and I'm going to start over here in Inkscape and we'll see in Inkscape then what what we do is we want to create a path that's the necessary thing to create a path and let's just create something simple first um, obviously not a path but let's Fill it with nothing. And set the stroke to black. There we go. It doesn't really matter, I just want to see it. And somehow there must be a way to skew this thing. I can't remember how. Oh yeah, come on, get back here. This program has some question marks. So if I click it, there we go, skewing. <laughs> Sorry about that. And so we have it skewed, and so we have that angle there now as well. And this is just a path. This is all we really need from here is the path, but because this is a closed shape, it won't be the path we want. So we're going to have to disconnect it somewhere. In the animation, we can't see it now. We split it into somewhere in the third. So we're going to go down here somewhere and add another point to this. Let's, let's convert this. Create this to a path, there we go. So this thing right here, what I want to do is I want to create another point in here. And move it, no, 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 not like that. Okay, so I have this point, and I want to move this point down, a little bit more down here, because I want to split it along there. And I want to do at this point is I want to split this point and I'm trying to see if I can split it how I split it at this point. There we go. So now we have, you'll see we actually have two paths. And we'll just let the other one finish here. If this program, this is one of the problems with the Inkscape is that it's really hard to work with certain uh, positions because the snapping just drives you crazy at some point. And I must be able to zoom in here somehow. I don't know how with the trackpad. So we're just gonna leave it right there. And I'm gonna save this somewhere. Save it somewhere. And I'll just leave it off to the temp drawer if I have one. And what I need to get out of here is the path. And I don't know which side, which side is a start. It's kind of the annoying thing. I don't know which direction the path goes, but it won't make a big difference. You can change if the animation, the other tools, I think like Illustrator has better ways to create path management. And it, you can figure out that in your own tool. Now let's go to the um, doo -doo 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 -doo. oh yeah, come on Mac, I can't go to a certain directory. I always love this on. Uh... <laughs> it's so annoying. I mean, why can't I just go to a directory on the Mac thing? Just let me go there. It obviously, let me save there. I just save it somewhere else. It's probably easier than trying to figure out what. Save it here for now. And where's my home directory now? <laughs> oh, this is terrible. <laughs> it's, just, it's just so much fun looking for uh, things on the Mac. And it's not because I don't know where they are, it's just because the file interface is just terrible. It just. So let me type a path in. All right, so I got this open, and this is an SVG file. 
and that's what it is. But what we're looking for down here is this path information. This is the path we want right here. And this path information, I can put this in into fuse, and this becomes a path. It will make this black. And I'll make it wide for now. And if I save this, I should be able to see we're reviewing it over here, and we should see that path right now. Now, interesting what you see is that it's filling the whole thing which is correct, but it's not skewed. And that means that the transform is being applied in Inkscape, and I can't remember how we do that. There's actually a way to flatten this thing somehow. I don't remember, because it's, it's, it's applying an effect, and I don't want that effect to be there. And one of these ways is supposed to actually simply flatten that. And I'm trying to think of how I flatten that right now, because we want the actual skewed path. We don't want a skew to be applied to that path. And how on earth could I possibly do that? I know I've done it before. And what if, I wonder if that was enough what I just did though. That looks to be like enough, because it totally changed the path and I just, let's find out. There you go. So that's enough and it's, it's filling up. It's a bit too wide, but that's just because it's off the screen. So this fills it up. We have our stroke path here. Let's give this a bit of a margin just so that we can work with this margin equals 10. Now I'll close, make this window a bit smaller so we can see it. So the fundamental path animation features we have in Fuse are the stroke offset and stroke length. Or we say path length, start with this one. And this will be a fractional part of the length. So 0 0.5 should be half of the length. And so you see we're starting the other way. I'm just gonna live with that for now. I'm not gonna change the direction. You can do a minus five if you want to do the other direction, but then you have to start somewhere else. And so it should work, but it, we'll get to that in a bit path length, and you also have the path start. So we can start at 0 0.25. Oops, there we file. And so we can have the basic animation right there. So let's add a click handle. Let's just add a panel to the whole thing somewhere. And hit test mode equals local bounds. Just so we have something to click to test this with. So what option do we have for animating? Let's give this thing a name up here. UX name equals, let's just call it outside. And then we want to do, we want to change outside.pathstart. We want to change this to be, actually I'm going to do the full animation first. Let's do it path length equals one, duration equals one. And the path start we're going to leave as is and leave the path length at zero to start with. So now you'll see nothing there. And if I click on it, it draws the path. And so this is the basic way we do path animation. And so what we can modify here is now is that how do we do a partial path? If you have multiple paths animated along here, we'd have the same path data. And we're going to create multiple paths then, and we'd see how they do the basic animation. <clears throat> String UX uh, global equals path data. I haven't done this one in a while either. Let's see how this works. And the data, I should be able to put path data in here now. Uh oh. So we got UX value.
Now what's his problem? Um, no, 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 no. I'm trying to remember how I did this. I'm pretty sure I actually did this. Uh, but because this is a string, this is a problem. Um, how did I get that to not be a string before? I had an example where I did this. I might have to go look that up. I actually had a path with it. Let me go look up that file. I think I remember where I put it. I'm pretty sure it was in the Fuse demos. And it was on the... That's your split, possibly? There's four of them on the... Now why is it changing stuff on the test page? I like that. And this is just to trick it into using the name because strings otherwise would be processed as strings. So now we have the string. And this will let us create multiple paths. You can see it's a lot simpler now. And if you really want, we can simplify this a bit more even. So we're gonna create three of the same path. So it's a UX class equals outside path. Draw color, let's use it. Now I'm not gonna put a margin on it this time. And the rest of it I'm just gonna leave as is. So now we have outside, so I'm gonna put a panel in the middle. Panel, and we're gonna fix the width of this thing and I'm gonna take the natural size of it. Panel margin equals 10, Height equals just to say 40, I'd say 30%, and we'll just let this stuff fit to filter that instead. Now I can say outside path. Path length equals zero to start with. UX name equals outside. And I meant to stick the path data on here. Data equals path data. And that should be all I need there. So now we can, I'm doing this so that I can reuse it a bit easier. So I have outside path and that should still work. And what do they get managed? Outside, nothing reference to outside. Oops. Two errors. Now I can add a second path to this. So I'll add a second outside path. Path length equals zero. We'll start that at zero as well. And I'm just gonna call this outside one and this call is outside two. Change outside one. Now if I do them both exactly the same, you're not going to see anything because they're both, both the same path. So what we might want to do now is going to say path start equals zero here. Path start equals one or zero here as well. And we'll change that as well. And I'm not going to make it take the whole length. I'm going to say we'll take only half the length and go to half the position. And for path two, I want to give a different distance we take. I'm going to say take start path length equals one. And we don't want to change it. I don't want to change the one now. I'm going to make it a lot shorter. I'm going to make it 0 0.25. And the path start is going to be 0 0.2. And that's where it'll go to. So now if I click, we see two lines come around. And that creates the basic effect that we want. We, I would have to create a few more lines and let's create a third line as well to see how that actually works. And then I'll choose some sort of happy medium for what happens. We'll cart outside three. And I'll split this into four. So path length starting at five. Let's go to six and make it only 0 0.4. Then the next one, I'm gonna split the starting down to 0. 
Let's do 0 0.35 and make it too, no, too long at 0 0.35. And path three. Path length is going to be very short. It's not going to go very far. Didn't go far enough. I mean, that middle one looks like it should be a bit more split off. And if you wanted to have it directly in the corner, you'd have to measure that exactly like where it is actually that relatively on the stream. So let's move this other this middle one back a little bit. Path start 0.3. Now this full animation in effect, we're kind of losing it because it's going back and forth. So let's add a switch instead. I'm going to put a switch at the top. Switch alignment equals top. Let me just stick this in here while on, or while true. And you can control what happens. It's no longer clicking, it'll be on and off. And this would be then like a timeline or a manually figured thing that you'd normally want. So now I can turn it on and you can see the animation as it goes on. Then we turn it off and you can see where it starts and stops. And at the ending position, I can see now that, hey, this is not really a good starting point for this, where we want this. I, I kind of want to see the whole feature on each of these. So the path start in this one should be a bit further back. And the path start on that last one should also be slightly further back, just so we can see the corner and see what happens with that. And whoa, oops, I changed the length, which was wrong. I wanted to change the start. Let's put this up to three lines. Zero H is probably correct. Now I want the last one to go further. The one's not in the middle. The last one should go a bit further than that as well. Maybe start, let's say, let's go start a little bit longer and go a little bit further. The first one should start a little bit further back and the middle one can also start a little bit further back. And I'm just sort of visually balancing these right now. So I have that outside. It's still not, it's really, I'd prefer to be even further back. That last one is just a little bit odd. So that gives some kind of basic effect to it. I'm not trying to recreate the animation exactly. What I'm trying to show is how we can actually create such animations that way. And this was the outside one. Because this path, because it's a path, it also adjusts to the size. We don't have to worry about it being a fixed size. So if I, if, if I stick the margin here to be like 50 or something instead, It's still okay with that, or I set the margin to be. I might have fixed size scaling right now. Let me check that out. All right, it's currently sizing to that thing, but we can fix that if we need it. I'll look that up. I think it, it by default fits itself correctly in there, and I'd have to look up how to do that otherwise. But that's the basic animation. There was one bit in the middle as well there though. What's good is we have this path and we can actually use this path for multiple things because there was also a vector sort of in the middle of there. So if I take the same path and I say UX, I say data equals path data, put that in the middle and now I say color and let's just make this a, a darker red. And this is behind it, and that's, I actually make it a lot lighter red, so it blends in. And I'm gonna get a margin here as well. So now we can see the lines going around it. It's not sizing correctly yet. And I think I have to figure out the sizing. But I want to look at the animation part first. The rest is a layout-based issue that you can get back to. 
and this middle one sort of expanded and collapsed. And there's another option for doing that. We can put clipping on here. And I'm trying to think of the best way to do that. There's a limiting box size on this. Yeah, and the limit, limiting is basically a little bit weird concept. So I'm going to say panel alignment. So that's a sensor width equals 100%. Box sizing equals limit. Limit width equals zero percent. Limit height equals one hundred percent. Now, if I did this correctly, nothing should change now. That's correct. But the limit width, because it's not limiting anything yet, and clip to bounds, I'm going to say is true. Now it should disappear. And you're going to have to give this one a name. You're going to say name equals inside box. Limit width equals 100, duration equals 1. Okay, what happened? Oh, okay, that's not doing what I want. <clears throat> it's not doing the clipping the way I thought. Um, it's really not doing what I wanted. Height equals 30%. It's not supposed to affect the sizing of the one inside of it. Let's put the margin on there. Margin equals 10. supposed to actually clip it. <clears throat> now why is it not doing that? I'm, I'm really concerned as to why it's not doing that. That was the purpose of limit box sizing and I've used it for that before because limit box is supposed to be able to say look just don't affect the layout inside and let it size normally but it might be the path interfering with that. That would be a defect of course. Analyst. Probably shouldn't make a difference in theory, right? <laughs> but it does, and that bothers me. So I'm going to take a look at the documentation of the path. Maybe I have to set the size differently there. Path, path, class. I don't really like the search feature. Right, there's a fit mode, but I want to look at... Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, it's probably stretch mode. All right, that's not exactly what I want. It's an effect we can work with, but it's not exactly what I want, though, because it's not filling it up correctly. It does stretch it, but it's not... And the margin we've seen before, it doesn't necessarily have have the same effect. All right, let's change something here. Let's let's not do this. Let's do a fixed width and stuff. Width equals the width of wrapper, and height equals the height of the wrapper. I'm going to do that right here. There we go. That that creates more what I wanted. I'm not sure why I couldn't do that directly with the clipping box. And this is what all of these should have had. I can do times 0.8. I'm going to have to play around with the numbers a little bit. This will give it a margin. And actually, what we could do is 
put this up in the panel. Ugh. Get over to this, then we can stick a padding on it. Okay, now what do we have? Alright, so the, <clears throat> the sizing is still not lining quite right up, and that's because of these outside paths here should also probably have, because we have a fixed height there, they should also have a stretch mode of fit or fill. And that'll fill that then, so they're all matching the same size. And this creates that reveal of the center panel. You could actually do stretching of the center panel as well, but if you have text in there, you'd actually want to have it reveal it, because you want the text to reveal as well. So I can do that here, so I can say text and value equals John Smith. That was the original text. This color equals zero. Font size equals 48, alignment equals center. Okay, so now it should reveal the tech. Okay, I have to put it in front of the path, obviously, because this is behind it. So now it reveals that as well. <clears throat> With a little bit of work in the layout, I can get this to adjust the size dynamically. I'm not gonna do that right now. I think that shows the defaults though. So this shows the two basic effects. If we look back at the page, those are the two basic effects. Now, the middle one here actually extends. It actually looks like it's doing a scaling as opposed to a reveal. And scaling is actually easier to accomplish because you can just affect the scale of the middle one. But I did a reveal and I think you need the reveal as well because it's doing kind of both. So the corners are kind of doing both. So I'm not sure you can work with both of them. Now these other lines here, you don't want to actually have to create all of these lines in the program. You can create a second path in Inkscape that has a dashed line and then import that as well. That would give you a dashed line reveal as opposed to this. What else can I do with this now? I think I've covered the basics here and I don't want to spend too long on this because I don't want to start playing with the minor details. I just wanted to show those basic animation techniques, how you can do those lines and how you can do a reveal. And obviously it's not so great the way it looks, but it gives you the idea of how this would work and then how you could create a component from this. Because this component here, you notice I have this fixed size, but you can make it depend on the size and size and you just have to play with the wrappers a little bit to get that working. And if somebody's interested in that, if you want to see that like next show, how I make this into a component that adapts to the size of the text in the middle, I can gladly do that on the next show. It'd be something small enough I can do. I want to keep the shows a bit shorter so they're a bit more useful for YouTube for people to look at them. And I think I'm going to leave it at this for now. I'll upload the code. I'll put the link there. And if you have questions, ask on Slack or ask on YouTube when I upload it or follow me on Twitter. And... Be sure to follow me and we're going to engage. I'll keep doing the shows as long as people are interested. So be sure to spread the word and get the view count up on either Twitch or on YouTube. And then I'll keep doing these shows. If you have ideas, just let me know. I thank you very much for watching and then I'll see you next time.